so uh, because of this current situation, the coronavirus pandemic, I do some adjustment. Uh, before I was planning to do this live demo in a car workshop. I think one of the best that uh, gives me a lot of portfolio while taking photos in that place. Now we move to this uh, humble small room. I hope I can still perform quite interesting demo shoot. For this demo, I will combine uh, phase one brown color lights. And then after that, all of the image have to be monitored in uh, this special monitor. This is an ASO 2730, the monitor that can display 100% Adobe RGB files. The monitor also have uh, self calibration tools. This camera will produce a good color combination with the brown color case, even greater color. And then we do editing in this monitor to produce an accurate and really good color. Uh, for me, these tools are my workflow trinity. It creates the flow perfect and flawless to produce high quality image. I will use uh, the XF features that the vibration delay and mirror up, focus stacking, uh, and also the lift shutter. The lift shutter is one of the features that Phase One already put in their system for a long time ago. It's still very useful until now. This is my first setting. Before this, I was planned to take this kind of shoot in the car workshop. But because of the pandemic, the coronavirus, so I try to simulate almost similar setup, but we do it in, in much smaller. Uh, so this setting is also applicable in the real uh, situation. Uh, if we want to shoot the real car, I usually do the same. Only the difference is the size of the light shaper. Okay, so the explanation for this setting is I'm using two types of light. Uh, the first type is the studio flash, uh, artificial light, and then the second one is the light from outside. It's ambient light that can be easily handled by leaf shutter from the Snyder lens. Phase one already put the leaf shutter since a long time ago. With leaf shutter, we can easily adjust the balance between the artificial light and the ambient light. So we can create a lot of creative effect uh, leaf shutter. And because of the leaf shutter Phase 1 put in their lens, the camera doesn't need any high speed sync trigger system for the lamp. The camera can switch automatically and instantly from the focal plane shutter into leaf shutter. By using leaf shutter, we can use a high speed sync for flash up to 1600. The technical explanation for this setup is the big softbox here. This one, I want to create a shape from the model car. Okay, and then the second light is backlight behind the car to create some special effect later. And then I put a one battery powered lamp here. Okay, uh, this one is for put some color on the model car. Uh, and then I will play with the background exposure with the leaf shutter. And then for the object, I'm using the 1 by 18 scale car. This setting is to simulate the real situation if shooting in a car garage or shooting the actual car. Uh, these two lamps will create a nice backlighting for car model. And because of the sharpness of the camera and the staggering megapixel, I think it's best to not expose all of the details of the car because this is a not too good quality ACAS car. So I want to hide the details. So I just want to create the mood for this car. Okay, we start to shoot. Uh, the first exposure, I put all the flash. Uh, let's see the result. Oh, for this setup, I'm using ISO 50 and I'm using a 1 by 60 shutter speed. Aperture is 8, so I still can get nice blurry background. And considering the medium format have a thinner depth of field, so I think 8 still produce a really nice uh, blurry background. This is the result with normal exposure with synchro speed. If we want the background to be lighter, so we can just lower the speed. And if we want to make the background darker, we just have to speed up the shutter speed. And then let's add some special effects. Let's put some water uh, on the back of the car and let the backlight uh, lit up the water particles. I think it will create a really nice effect. I will show you several of my portfolio that use similar setup with, with this demo. 
take advantage from leaf shatter practicality. So with leaf shutter is easy to use, we can get a lot more variation easily. We just have to change the shutter speed. And then the leaf shutter also give more flexibility in playing with balance between the artificial light and the ambient light. For the second setup, I will make a simple uh, setting. I will take a photo of this uh, black boring perfume but with the light. Uh, I'll try to make it quite appealing. So uh, the main light I'm using will only this one, but the softbox, I will not use it for the settings. It's only to light me up now, so I don't look like a ghost in the video. So later when I take the photo, this I will turn this off. Okay. One of my amazing features that XF has is this seismograph. Like you can see on the top of this, on the XF LCD, there's a seismograph that will detect if the camera still have a vibration. We don't know if when we're shooting a still life shoot, there's a, like a big truck across the street or there's a small earthquake maybe or somebody's walking pass by and create some unwanted vibration. The camera will detect. And then the, the good thing is we can adjust, adjust the camera to and put it in a vibration delay. So the camera will wait until the vibration is zero and then the camera will instantly shoot. The other method that I use to prevent the vibration is using the tethering using Capture One and then put the camera into live view mode. And then the amazing thing they do to the, to the camera is we can adjust the focus from the computer. So we can uh, control this camera remotely. Many times in still live shoot, we have to craft or put things carefully like this one by one and the camera cannot move. As we all know that in still life shoot, only slight movement or slight different position from the light or from the lens create big difference in the frame. Okay, so for the camera is, is already uh, set, the composition is Okay, I will I will put the camera into vibration delay. I'll be using uh, f11 so I can get a uh, then shoot. I haven't adjust the white balance yet, so let's see if we can adjust the white balance after we get the result. Let's see how the files can handle this kind of color distortion. Uh, because of the exposure is six seconds and then the the light source is yellowish, I think the result must be a. Uh, have a really bad yellow. I check the oh okay so the the label also already really sharp. Uh, the cap is sharp. The lower part is already blur because it's f11. Okay let's see if I change the white balance here. White balance here. Oh oh, oh that's a really nice result there. Let's see, let's do some highlight recovery. I have to rotate the bottle a bit and then let's adjust color so we can, oh, okay, that's good. And then we can use keystone to make the bottle have a perfect shape, zero perspective. I usually use this feature, keystone feature when I shoot architecture but but for products it also works well like this one I recompose oh in capture one also there's a phase one make a luma curve it's really nice to, to use okay like this I add some vignette okay that's I think that it's I think I have more strong image than the compared to the 
actual raw result so we can get the result instantly and then the good thing is the adjustment will will also uh, apply to the next image this image has already shoot in uh, f22 but but as you see uh, the, the cap is sharp the brand is sharp the label but the lower parts of the bottle still still not sharp enough so for the case like this if we already use the smallest aperture but we still want to achieve all sharp so we can do the focus stacking process so i will do focus stacking process on the xf now okay now we will perform uh, focus stacking this time i will use flash so we can see how fast the focus stacking process is okay now let's uh, move to the focus stack i will divide the image into 10 consecutive and then after that i define the farthest focus point and the closest focus point the back dial buttons it will move the lens uh, quite far but if we want to move the lens uh, more detailed we can use the the front dial okay so i got the farthest point so I, and i got the closest point let the camera do all the work And then all of the image is already taken. When we are using focus stack, there's a mark of focus stacking here. So what we can do is we can select these 10 images. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can uh, do some adjustment first. And then the good thing is the, the people in phase one is already prepared the script. We can do the image teaching seamlessly with Helicon Focus. So like this, like we can just go to image edit with stack in helicon focus okay okay and then let the capture one do the job again so i can go to the pantry again to take another coffee all these good things is done automatically okay let's wait several seconds i think this process is depends on the spec of our computer too so, so you see all of the image is already put in Helicon Focus by Capture One. Okay, and then there's a rendering method, there's a weighted average, there's a depth map, there's a pyramid. We choose this rendering method uh, based on the type of image. If our image have a lot of uh, rich color gradation, then you have to choose certain method. Or if our image have a very rich detail, we have to choose certain method. Why I say certain method? Because I haven't learned uh, much about this method. So I just trust the software that the software is using the method B so okay I just follow the software and then render so you see the, this this right part I really like to see how the software rendered the focus stacking process perfectly and then after this uh, the helicon focus also automatically put back the results to the capture folder in capture one so we can uh, do further adjustment in capture one Okay, the label is sharp, the lower label is sharp, the closest paper is sharp, and then the back part is also sharp. So we get all a very sharp image. This will produce a really high quality image. This is Eric Dinardi. I'm from Indonesia. Currently, I'm stay in Jakarta, and this year is my 16 year of career as a professional photographer. I've been using Base One uh, for nine years since 2011. Since 
a face one still have a shape like this. Until now, I haven't marked myself as a certain types of photography specialist. So I choose several type of photography that I like. That is still like architectural, I like product shot. I also uh, like to do commercial shoot. I feel that photography has a very broad knowledge, so many things to explore that I want to learn in my life. I believe by learning several types of photography, the techniques can be combined into something great or something greater. I was started as a food photographer. I went to college to study electrical engineering. But before graduation, I got a very special client, the one that changed my life. That's a life changer number one. I have two life changers in my life in my photography career. She is a famous and legendary bakery in Bandung that gave me a lot of projects at that time. Every day I could go back to her place several times, maybe four or five times a day to shoot cakes or several types of food. She also very critical. She gave me a lot of input and knowledge. I learned about food photography a lot because of her. Thankfully, she allowed me to do a lot of mistakes. At that time, I feel that it's really hard to achieve accurate color and then to reveal the texture or how to get the perfect composition for food. Now it's a nice moment, but at that time it's a quite hard moment. <laughs> After I do food photography for several months, the other projects came. And then at that time, I tried to establish portrait studio. I also tried to do wedding photography. After five years doing wedding photography, I know that I'm not built for wedding photography. I don't like wedding photography. And also for the portrait studio, uh, I discovered that Taking photo, only me and the model, that's usually the model are pretty or not pretty, even worse. It makes me nervous, so I think, oh, okay, maybe I was built to take a product photo. I also did architectural shoot professionally. Doing architectural shoot gave me a lot of insight about proportion or distortion and then the lens capability limitation and then I learned about how to use the ambient light well or how to create certain kind of mood and then a white balance and dynamic range. In still life photography, I learned a lot about creating a light setup from artificial light. I also feel that we can, we can have full control in creating image. So in still life, I learned about how to create the photographs. And then for commercial photography, for me, commercial photography is like a test to everything that I've learned with uh, something extra other than technical side. In commercial, I have to prepare to be able to deliver what client's expectation and direction with a very limited time, no matter how challenging the situation was or no matter how good or bad the situation is, in the end, we have to deliver the perfect image. So commercial photography, I think it's like a test. 
So it's good for me to keep doing it all the time. And luckily, after several years, I got several opportunities to create uh, fine art photos. Some of the clients uh, order me to create some collection for their personal collection. So until now, I'm still enjoy to be hybrid. I feel I still want to learn a lot of uh, different type of photography and still hungry for more knowledge. And for the process after taking photo, I also do some editing. Editing time. It's a perfect time to evaluate how we shoot and doing reverse engineering study about our photo shoot, such as how the software will respond uh, or how much flexibility we can do in editing with our raw photo. Usually in my editing time, that is the time when many times I spec myself by not doing the photo shoot properly. If I didn't do the photo shoot well, it's really give me a hellish time in doing editing. I hope after I smack my head, I can uh, create a better photograph after that. Uh, currently, I also study about uh, motion and video. From from video and motion, I learned about color and histogram, and then color limitation that the sensor can produce. So this is the camera that makes me look handsome. All of the capability and specification of Face One camera, this camera totally makes you more handsome. Uh, we are amateurs. Maybe if we hold this, we look. Professional instantly. So when we talk about Phase One, I'm using Phase One since the 645DF, and in the beginning I used the P40 Plus digital tech. This is the camera that after we use it, I guarantee that our eyes and feeling cannot go back to the system that have a lower specification. At the beginning, honestly, I brought Phase One because of the clients that will give me big project had a lot better camera than my camera at that time. Mine is second from entry level DSLR, while the client have the top tier 135 DSLR with a lot of lenses. In short story, I brought Phase One to leverage or to look more professional in in the front of my client. And the other story, uh, I brought my first Phase One by sold my house. Uh, all of my family was telling me that I'm crazy to bring such expensive camera that they never imagined, and I also. Cannot imagine that I will buy the expensive camera at that time. But for me, it's like a commitment to fight. It's like a commitment to be the best or entering the top league of photography competition. I also thought that if I'm still using my uh, previous system, I'll compete with millions of great photographers. But if I'm using Phase One, I will compete with even more greater photographer, but with uh, smaller numbers. So I think the fight is worth to do. It's harder fight, but I think it's worth to do. Then what happened later, uh, I got my money back a lot faster than my previous system. And so the big project also come. And the difference is when I shoot uh, for, for a big company director, they usually ask me, what, what kind of camera is that? What is that? What is that camera? And then they tell me, oh, I have uh, this camera, I have this camera, but they rarely know phase one. So it creates a conversation. So I think it's a uh, uncovered story that I experienced with Phase One. Honestly, I I really enjoy every picture that the camera produced. I really enjoy to look at my photo results. So despite the specification of this Phase One or the camera capability, I also use the advantage of the Phase One brand to leverage myself and my business. So if I think of Phase One, I think massive megapixel is a bonus. The image definition is what matters most. It's totally different. The sharpness, the line, the contrast, the dimension, the clarity is irreplaceable. Uh, 
uh, that's all for this webinar. I hope I already share uh, quite interesting stuff or useful stuff. And uh, until now, I'm still really enjoy using Face One. I'm still amazed by the image quality that this camera capable of. And then I also uh, really like the philosophy that is we have to keep upgrading. We have to stand out among the crowd. We have to keep learning like infinity platform that the camera can be grow all the time. We have to keep learning new knowledge, adapting new technology, and we have to present more and more and better and better image quality for our clients, considering the industry that's really competitive. So I think uh, thank you Face One for the chances and thank you for, for you that already uh, watched my webinars today. Thank you.